Welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Yesterday, Rusty Rasmus announced his squad to take on Ireland as well as Portugal in the incoming series, which will take place in July. And as any sort of Springbok squad, um, there are a couple of omissions and a couple of players who just were unlucky to miss the final squad. And uh, it's caused a lot of outrage um, and a lot of debate, for example, as usual, because Whenever we have a squad announcement, we sort of spend the first sort of week really sort of questioning certain calls, scrutinizing certain decisions, and then we kind of settle in and get ready to watch exactly what's going to happen. And uh, come next week, Saturday, you know, it won't really matter what we think with regards to who we think should be in the squad and who we should and who didn't make the squad, because it will all be about the 23 players that take to the field to take on Ireland in a two-match series, which is very much being dubbed a grudge match. Today we're going to be talking about uh, five players who I think are very unlucky not to be in the main squad and um, talk a little bit about why they could potentially be there, who they could potentially replace, as well as you know what their prospects are in the near future. Before we do that, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. I want to know what you think of these five players, for example, and what other players do you think are very unlucky to miss out on the squad? And the biggest problem is, I mean, for example, even now, it's a very big squad. It's 39 players. And there's still 14 players on the reserve list. So we're sitting here with a very large group of potential sort of Springbok um, players and a much bigger group than a lot of international sides do sort of work with. And even announced in terms of the standby list and the likes. You know, a lot of um, sides around the world don't even announce a standby list. Certainly not a standby list with a 39-man squad. Most sort of traveling squads tend to be sort of 33, 34 uh, maybe even 35. I mean, to have a 39 squad is already a very big squad, and then to have a 14 man standby list um, is also pretty big. But in terms of players, I think we're very unlucky. We're going to go through five of them, and obviously, you know, you might agree, you might disagree, which is why I want to know your opinion. Right, let's start with number one, which is Volko Low. Tremendous season um, at the Bulls, and uh, has been one of the sort of key players in what was was a very successful season for the Bulls. Yes, they didn't come good right in the final, but at the end of the day, they still managed to get to a Champions Cup quarterfinal. They managed to get to the URC final, and uh, so they weren't far away from having a very good season. Vilko Lowe, an incredibly important part of that, playing 1,308 minutes, an average of 60 minutes per game, um, where he started uh, all of his games, 100% started for the 22 um, of his games this season, and um, was... Massive for the Bulls, quite literally. Um, he, he was the uh, sort of cornerstone of that of that scrum. He outscrammed the likes of uh, even in the sort of run up to the 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 the, um, the final. Uh, outscrammed uh, Leinster, you know, and uh, and and did a serious job on on Andrew Porter. Had some very impressive performances against the likes of a, a an Oxen Chair, who we all know is one of the best scrummers in the world, for example, um, and has very much sort of shown. How he is very, how much he should be on the Springbok radar. Now, the problem with him is that he's competing with the likes of Franz Mohoba, who, in my opinion, is the best tight end in the world, and Vincent Koch, who's been around the block and a double World Cup winner, as well as potentially even a Chairman Yukani, Thomas Toy, two players who are um, Chairman Yukani, part of the World Cup squad last year. Thomas Toy, who had a phenomenal season in, 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 in the Premiership for Bath. And also, I think the problem is that those two players also come a loose head. So it's not a case of Bill Colo not being good enough, it's a case of being. There being so much depth in that particular position, he just doesn't get in. The good news for him, though, is he is on the standby list, which means that he can be drafted. And given the fact that he is uh, quite a bit younger than some of the other options, for me, will be a regular in that lineup moving forward. Next player I'm talking about is Tyrone Green. And I think we missed a trick here, to be honest. Uh, with the injury to Damien Vinimsa, uh, we've got Vili LaRue, but he is obviously sort of uh, getting nearing the end of sort of the twilight years of his career. Um, I think we missed an opportunity to bring Tyrone Green in, to be honest. Uh, I think that, for me... Um, very exciting! Another another good season in the in the uh, the Premiership for Harlequins. He won won some man of the match performances in the key stages of the the Champions Cup, uh, including their Champions Cup. I think it was a semi final loss, um, or final loss, or, or quarter final loss, um, whatever it was. Um, I think it was the quarter finals, um, and um, no semi finals. It was, was semi finals uh, against Toulouse, uh, and um. Had a very, very good season. And uh, I feel for him. I mean, 2,186 minutes. I mean, he played a ridiculous amount of rugby for the Harlequins. I mean, he averaged 78 minutes. Um, he didn't play off the bench once. Um, played majority of his rugby at, at 15. And uh, was really, really good. If you look at the points, uh, scored uh, eight tries across the season in his 28 games. Averaging uh, 0.3 tries per game. 
and uh, is now very much on the the radar for England. And and I think that you know with the with 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 fullback, for example, it's a position that I think moving forward he could really bolster. At. He can also play on the wing. So yeah, I understand it. again. Once again, we've got lots of players in that position potentially, but I do think with an injury to Damon Phillips, for example, the fact that Villarreal is moving on. Yes, you've got an upgrade of fast. Yes, you've got a Kieran Horn, but I don't think Tyron Green, who is uh, twenty six years old, coming into the best of his uh, of his years, for example, I don't think that um, he he could only have added for me to the um, to the box sort of depth, um, and, and it would be really cool to have seen him. Uh, as part of that setup. Our next one is the Bulls captain, Ruan Nokia. Uh, again, I think probably just, you know, unlucky. Um, they've gone with Ruben van Heerden, I think, ahead of him. Uh, I do think that he still remains on the Springbok radar, where they potentially might be even a potential answer to that whole idea of, you know, somebody who can play at five and a play at the flank at seven, um, ways to be seen. But he had another fantastic season. Uh, I think that he's really matured. And and I think giving them the captaincy has, has brought out a, a different side of him. I think that he will be a Springbok. I think, you know, he will play many, many games. You know, we, we're really constantly looking for a replacement for Franco Mostert. Um, I think he is potentially very much in that mold. Uh, I think, again, he's unlucky. I personally would have also gone with Ruden van Heerden if I was the box squad, box coaching staff. I think Ruden van Heerden has had a really good season for me, really sort of ticks the boxes for what the box want in a, a, a Springbok lock. But um, I think he can be very, it comes out very unlucky. He is 25 years old, so not really a youngster as, as such as he was a couple of years ago. You know, coming more now into sort of the immaturity. And I think we've seen that in his performances as well. And I suppose the, the thing for him is to just keep doing what he's been doing. Um, he is on the radar. He is in and around that squad. I think he has to be. Um, the fact that he's already been sort of captain has a, a chance, you know, shows that he is on the radar. But um, yeah, unfortunately for him, just not... Um, able to get to that squad just yet. But I think somebody who, if he has another season like he has this season, next season, I think puts himself right back into the mix. This was Cameron Harnikov. Now, the interesting thing is that he sh would have been in the squad. And so this is not really a, a, a uh, conversation about the coaches, but more conversation about timing. Uh, he has been absolutely sensational for the Bulls. He's been the breakthrough player, really, of this season. And... Um, the fact that they noted on the Springbok squad list that he wasn't considered because of injury means that basically he would have been in the squad. And uh, for me, it's a matter of time before Cameron Honeycomb is a Springbok. And given the fact that the number eight position is one of the big sort of positions we're going to try and, and replace with Dwayne Vermeer, yes, for Visa the band now, it would have been such a good opportunity for him against Ireland and uh, even Portugal to have had a go at the number eight jersey, given Evan Ruiz a proper run for the money. I actually think he might have actually had the inside run, to be honest. Um, I think he's such a good all-round player. Uh, he's got the skill set, got the power, got the pace. Uh, he's an intelligent, uh, got good rugby IQ. And I think that uh, he, I think for me, he's got a better all round game than Aaron Rose, who is very attack orientated, a uh, very different type of player to a certain degree. Um, but I would have been very interested to see, had he been fit, if he would have potentially started those two tests against Ireland. So massively unlucky. He will be a Springbok. I think this year he will be a Springbok, to be honest. I think as soon as he's fit, he'll be back into that squad um, or into that squad for the first time. And it would be an amazing. Um, year for him to basically have his first real URC season and cap it off by becoming a Springbok. And finally, Jean Augustus, Troki, as he's known. Um, and I think he's unlucky. I think, again, you know, we're talking about a position which is uh, up for grabs, a, a position where we need to find new blood. And Evan Rose currently is the, the sort of the first choice eight in the squad. You've got the likes of Pepsi Butelezi, although I think these days um, he might be sort of migrating more towards the number six than the number eight. Um, you've got Quack Smith who can play there. But with the injury to Cameron Harnacorn, and with the suspension to Jasper Visa, with the retirement of Dwayne Tamir, I think this would have been the time to bring in a, a Joanna Augustus who boasts a lot of what Springbok staff would want in, in, a, in a number eight. He's obviously massive. Um, he's about 120 kgs. Uh, stands at um, about 1.88, I think it is. Um, and uh, has had another very strong season for Northampton um, where he was one of their star players in a premiership victory. Got the semi-finals of Champions Cup. So he's been playing top-level rugby throughout the season and uh, been very, very good for them as well. So I do think that he fits the mold very well. I, I do wonder if he was playing his rugby in South Africa and, and putting defensive performances, whether he might still be in the in the sort of live. You think of an Impilo Gabedi, for example, um, and the fact that he's managed to get himself into that Springbok alignment camp and in the system. I think that Joan Augustus would have been there as well. So... The, uh, the original idea was always for him to go to Northampton for a few seasons and then make his way sort of back to the Stormers. That was kind of the initial idea. This was his third season with Northampton. So it'd be interesting to see if he does 
make that sort of uh, return. You know, they talked about the fact he always wanted to come back to the Stormers. Um, and I think that if you want to play for the Spring Market, coming back and playing for the Stormers would be um, the, the, the the real sort of way to get into it. Yes, some players will get in from overseas, but it's it's so much harder to get into the squad for the first time when you're based overseas compared to when you're based over here. Those are my five players. What do you think? Would you have them in your Spring Market squad? And if you and if you would, who would you have them ahead of? So, so for example, I look at that squad and I think probably would drop out Pepsi Put Lazy, for example, and include Eduardo Augustus. Um, in my opinion, I think for for Tyron Green, for example, sounds like a, 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 a controversial, but maybe even ahead, for example, of an Apple Fast, yeah, Apple Fast in the standby. I would have liked to have seen Tyron Green involved in that squad and give him a go. Um, again, I've been very impressed with what he's been doing for a number of years here. Um, and um, yeah, I could have liked, liked to have seen what he what he could have done. Cameron Hanukkah, I think, will be in the squad when he's back, obviously. Um, uh, Volker I think, will be very soon. Um, we're not here. Difficult to see where he fits in, but I think somebody's very much on the fringes. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.